Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Backpack Hack Channel. Today I'm going to be talking about long-term battery storage. If I look a little younger in this part of the video, it's because I recorded this portion of the video December 2017. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to do a test of how long batteries last under different storage conditions. What brought this up is I went to visit my folks last month for Thanksgiving, and I do that every year. They live over 800 miles away. And when I visit them, I do little things around the house. I change the batteries in their smoke detectors. They kept their batteries in the refrigerator. And I told them they didn't need to do that. They said, well, they last longer. So I did a little research and I found out even Energizer says you don't need to because alkaline batteries self-discharge at about 2% a year. So I did some quick math on the calculator. And even after 10 years, you have 86 or 87% of the original power of the battery left in 10 years. 86, 87%. I didn't think that was that bad. But then I got to wondering, is that even uh, a valid claim? Because what would happen if that's a lie and they're giving us a line thinking we can buy these batteries, put them away, and then in four or five years we pull them out thinking we've still got 92, 93, 94% of that battery left, and it isn't. So we've got to go buy new batteries. Whereas they still might have been usable had we refrigerated them. So I thought I'd do a test. And my test subject is going to be this pack of eight batteries and my, oh, I don't know when I bought this, late 70s, early 80s. It's just an old, regular, everyday, ordinary Energizer flashlight, and it still works. So I keep it around because they don't make them like this anymore. I bought this just yesterday at the hardware store. They are dated 1227. So these, and they even say right on here, they got a 10-year uh, shelf life. And to give you an idea about how long these batteries do last. I still have batteries that are dated 2009 in this flashlight. Both of these are, they expired in 2009. So these might be 15 year old batteries. I don't know. I've lived in this house for almost 11 years and I've never changed the batteries in this flashlight. Of course, I don't use it all the time. But the only time I use it is when the power goes out. And like I say, it, it still works, but the switch is kind of iffy, but uh, I probably bought this probably in the late 70s, early 80s. I don't really know, but I thought this would be a good test subject for these batteries because it's a regular incandescent bulb. It's not halogen. It's not LED or anything like that. So I thought that would be a good way to really put a drain on these batteries to test them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide these eight batteries into four packages. I'm going to put two and vacuum seal each package. I'm going to put two in my freezer, two in my refrigerator, two I'm just going to set on a um, desk in my back room, bedroom. And the other two I'm going to set over my storage unit, which has no uh, climate control. So being December, the first thing these things are going to do is start freezing. And of course, they're just going to sit in the shed for a year. So come next summer, they're going to be sitting in an oven. And by this time next year, hopefully they'll be frozen a couple of times. And so what I'm going to do is in December of 2018, by the time you see this video, each one of these batteries will be a year old and will have been uh, gone through three di or four different... Uh, environments for storage and then we're going to run them against each other and see how they come out so let's go ahead and get these all put into their packages and stored away for the you'd be able to watch this video in 2018 see you then okay it's now december 2018 and time to put these to the test i stopped by the storage unit last night and got the pair of batteries out of the storage unit it was about 26 27 degrees when i stopped by last night to get those out Brought them over here last night and took them out and put them as well as the refrigerator and the freezer batteries here on the table so they would acclimate to the room overnight. And so these have been sitting out all night and they're all the same temperature. I've got uh, a little log book here, a pair of scissors and pen to uh, cut these open and record the results. Unfortunately, uh, my plan was to use my vintage EverReady flashlight. Unfortunately, it is kind of iffy right now, and when it does come on, it flickers a lot. So I'm not going to use that because I tried to test it last night with my light meter here, and the, the meter was just jumping up and down. It was hard to get an idea of really how bright or how much light that was putting out. So I stopped by Walmart and picked up this little uh, cheapy flashlight. I think it was two and a half bucks. I spare no expense. And it runs off of one D-cell battery. I was kind of hoping to test both of the batteries together in that flashlight, but I guess testing them individually 
may not be such a bad idea. And it is an LED flashlight, so, and it seems to be pretty consistent with its light output. So I'm going to use that for the test. And in addition to my voltmeter, I'm going to test the voltages on these batteries. I've also got my light meter. And again, I spare no expense. This is my test rig. This is the bell end of a piece of 2-inch conduit. And I simply cut it off. And the reason I chose that is because my idea was, was to put, put the flashlight right on here. And then I cut a notch in it to set the light sensor for the... Uh, light meter underneath it and then I could measure the amount of light and not have to worry about that much of ambient light. Unfortunately, like I said, this is not going to work. So I'm going to actually use this flashlight, which is just a hair smaller, but it will still work. And I think if I simply take a rag and put down here along the bottom, that will, that will cut down on the extraneous light from the room and I'll be actually measuring how much uh, lux this, this flashlight is doing. This ended up being much brighter than this, and at this close of a range, I ended up overloading my light meter, even at the highest range. So what I did was I manufactured another high-dollar piece of test equipment, this diffuser. And it's actually just the cut-off side of a one-gallon milk jug. And I'm going to put that on here and then put the flashlight on top of it, and that will diffuse the light and allow me to make a reading. Now, this meter isn't a high-end meter. Uh, but it's probably going to be accurate enough to tell the difference, hopefully if there is a difference, between uh, how much light output each one of these sets of, each one of these batteries puts out. Now, if conventional wisdom holds true, the ones that came out of the freezer are going to be the highest voltage and put out the most light, and then the refrigerator, and then the room temperature ones, and the wild card is going to be the storage unit because this didn't get down to the same temperature as my freezer. My freezer is like minus four, minus six degrees Fahrenheit. It didn't get that cold. And when it did, it didn't get that cold for very long. So these have not been frozen that deep as the freezer, but they've also been baked. In the summertime, when it's 100 degrees out, it's probably 110, 120 for several days in that storage unit. So I'm going to say, if conventional wisdom holds and putting them in the freezer does increase their, their storage capacity. I'm going to say the freezer is going to come in the best, the refrigerator, and then the room temperature. And the storage unit is going to be either here at the bottom or between room temperature and storage unit. So with all that done, I'm going to go ahead, put the camera up overhead so you can look right down and see how I'm doing this test and see the results and we'll come back and we'll see what happens. But my thinking is, after a year, there isn't going to be a whole lot of difference. And if there is, this is the order that I'm going to predict that they're going to come out. So let's go ahead, put the camera up overhead, and run our test, shall we? Hopefully, you'll be able to read both my voltmeter and my light meter with this camera overhead. And hopefully, because I've got it suspended on kind of a rickety system, it isn't going to bounce around too much. But let's go ahead and get started. And... We're going to start out with the ones I had in a drawer stored at room temperature. We'll cut those open. I'm going to move that up there. And we're going to take the cheap battery out of this flashlight. And we're going to test the voltage of battery one here. 1.611 and now we're going to put it into the flashlight and place it on our my high dollar test stand. I'm going to move this around here a little bit so you can see that it is putting out, now this is 10x so it will be 3,720 Lux. And I'm going to simply do the same thing for the other eight batteries and see how they do.
Ah. And here we go. 3,590. So there are our results. And there's the results. By this, um, the highest voltage came from the ones that were stored in the drawer not the highest voltage, the ones in the freezer ended up with the highest voltage. Now remember, this is thousandths of a volt. So that's really, you know, on a percentage basis, you know, is, is, very, is very, very minuscule. The ones at the storage shed came up with the lowest voltages. And in terms of output, the ones that were simply stored in the drawer came up with consistently higher output I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Um, the freezer ended up with the highest uh, lux as well, overall. So at this point, it does seem to be a slightly higher voltage or a slightly higher energy savings and a slightly higher light output with this very crude uh, and very unscientific method of testing and storing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to package these back up because we're not done with this. Hopefully this is going to turn into a 10-year project. I'm going to package these back up and do this test again in 2021 and again in 2024 and again in 2028, 27, 27, 2027. Um, I'm going to test these every three years from here on out. And so three years from now, we're going to do the test. Six years from now, we're going to do the test. And if I'm still around and doing these videos, in nine years, we're going to do this test. So stick around. Hopefully, I'll be around then and be able to do this and come up with a little bit more conclusive information. So with all that done, hopefully this given you, you know, this was uh, my insight. You know, like I said, the freezer came out the best, but just just such a small amount, just a, such a tedious, teeny weeny little amount it's really negligible in the real world situation. So draw what your conclusions could be, but it does look like at least the freezer does the best, the refrigerator, and then the drawer, and of course a wild card being in the freezing cold and a blistering hot storage unit, it looks like those fare the worst. So like I said, I'm gonna put these back in the, uh, seal them back up, Run this test again in three years, and I'll see you then in three years. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there in the trail.